Today we are going to be playing with a heap of new makeup to me, so I don't actually think I really have maybe one or two products that's like brand new released, but a lot of this product, a lot of these products, sorry, have been released like a while ago and I'm just bringing them into my collection and I just wanted to share my first impressions and trying these makeup products for the first time because even though they were released ages ago they're exciting and new to me. Uh, the eyeshadow palette that we are going to dig into is the Natasha Denona Zendo palette as well, the midi one. So I wanted to pick this one up because I really wanted to compare like all the Zendos and just see the whole thread of them uh, and I thought we would try it together on camera. So. If that all sounds interesting to you guys, then you know the deal. Let's go ahead and do the YouTube things. Go ahead and give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and let's get into it. I'm going to start off with this NARS lip gloss. So this is the Dolce Vita Lip Shine Lip Gloss. I picked this up. I've, I'm going to do a full face of NARS, and I wanted to pick up like a heap of their products. And Space NK had this like Dolce Vita lip gloss and like a lip crayon set on sale so i picked that up and i tried this yesterday so this isn't like a first impression of this and i really liked it i liked how the color even though it looks quite deep in the lip balm packaging i guess whatever um tube i looked it looks like quite deep but on the lips it like just kind of looks like my lips but better and i found it quite nourishing so i'm into the nars lip glosses so far natasha denona zendo this is the one that we are using i have recently pretty much nearly completed my natasha denona collection i now have all of the midis <laughs> And I think I just don't have Sun Set and the two extra large ones. There's a few minis that I don't have, but the midi collection is finished and the big palette collection is finished except for Sun Set and the big ones and gold. But, you know, if anyone sees that around, let me know because I'll pick that up. Also, I have primed my lids already with Rare Beauty Eye Primer if you're wondering. I'm going to insert quickly swatches of this palette and I will put timestamps down below. It's just going to be a speed through, but I'll just pop timestamps down below in case you don't want to see the swatches. But if you do, they're going to be in there right now. I'm going to dip into the shade Balance first, which is just a matte shade. I like that there's, I like, sorry, that there's a lot of cream to powders in here. And I really, really want to use these shades today, but I'm going to save them for another day because I do have work today. So I want to kind of keep that a little bit more neutral. Not that they would care. It's all Zoom meetings and stuff, but I have to go to the post office and do all that crap as well. So I guess I'm just not feeling like wearing the greens today, especially because I'm wearing pink. Anyway, you don't care. Uh, BK202, we're going into balance first. I do like that there are so many matte, uh, cream to powders in here. I know you either like that formula or you don't, and I really, really like it. So I'm happy and I'm excited to try those greens and see how they perform. So we'll either use this in another video or, or I'll do like a short or something to see how those cream to powder greens perform, especially that more minty kind of one. That one intrigues me quite a lot because those shades are hard to formulate. I am running a little bit late this morning, so I'm going to try not to talk too, too much, but you know, you know how it'd be with me. I just found it really hard to get out of bed this morning. I'm not going to lie. My alarm went off and I was just like, absolutely not. This is atrocious. <laughs> so this, that's performing super lovely. Just exactly how a Natasha Denona matte would always perform. That's really, really pretty. So I'm into that. As a side note, my mum just texted me and said, there's a naughty puppy for sale. Do you want it? Because she just got a puppy like two months ago now, I think. And I'm going to put the video right here of what she's doing. She's like getting in the water bowl and like scratching it all out. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. I'm going to take my intensify stick and I'll just do it on this side and I won't do it on this side just so you guys can see half and half the difference that it makes just because this is a new palette. I know this there's been a zillion reviews and all that kind of stuff of this palette is not a new palette but just in case you've never come across it or you're interested. I'm going to take Yama which we all knew I was going to take because it's like the closest thing to Pat McGrath Labs VR Fire Opal. It's like a champagne-y goldy green shift and 
I am going to pop that here. Just a nice, easy, simple look today. Now I like to use intensifiers because it does just stop any potential glitter fallout and it stops my, like if the shadow might crease, which I don't find these shadows do, but if it was going to, it just extends the longevity of my shadows and all that kind of stuff. So I don't actually use it to necessarily intensify the shade or the metallic shade itself, but more so to extend the wear time of my shadows. But I know that not everyone has it, so definitely want to show the two. That is a really, really pretty shade. Nothing like crazy like VFI Opal from Pat. It's not like wham bam in your face, but it is a very soft, wearable, lovely shade. And if you're someone that doesn't want to wear color, but you would just like a hint of green because you want to, you you do want to wear a little bit of color, but just neutrals is your base zone. I'm right there with your friend. It's a good option because it just has an ever so soft shift of green to it, but it's very wearable. I think you can actually see this just makes the intensifies just makes this side look a little bit more like wet and metallic, whereas this side looks a little drier. Still very pretty, don't get me wrong. You could just wet your brush as well, it'll give you the same effect. I'm just gonna dip into a little bit of mindful here. This is a BK. Where are you? 205. It's just a slanted angle brush. So I'm just going to dip into a little bit of this. This is a cream to powder formula. And I'm just going to tap onto the outer corner just to deepen the outer corner. Oh, that was way too much. I pressed way too hard. So this is just a rougher 14 just to blend that out. That was not the shadow's fault. That was a me fault. That's why I always say soft touch. I've got no extra color just on this. I forget sometimes how pigmented Natasha's shadows are. Taking no extra color and just going back into that original brush, just going to, just wanna use a light hand and hold your brush back really far. If you've got Natasha Denona shadows and you're finding they're too pigmented, cause they are, a lot more of a pigmented shadow. They blend easy, so if you do make a mistake, it's quite easy to rectify it, but it's just something to keep in mind. I'm not a makeup artist, that's just what I find works for moi. I'm gonna put the Victoria Beckham Cocoa Liner on my top waterline, and then we're gonna move on to base makeup, so two seconds. I have a couple of new primers. I can't remember if I've only shown this in a short or a video, but I'm, I think this is only the second or third time I've tested this, and this is the Natasha Denona Hygiene Skin Gloss. I am doing a sneaky little video, but I'm still waiting on quite a few of the products to come where I review a heap of my favorite YouTubers. I'm just taking this on a brush, by the way. Favorite YouTubers, favorite makeup products from 2022. And I wanted to like test a heap of them before I go and make that video because I don't want that video to be a first impressions. I actually want it to be like, okay, so I've tested the, my, my favorite YouTubers or, you know, um, products and like here's what I think do I agree not agree um, so I've picked a heap of them up it was actually quite hard because a lot of people really liked the same things that I liked so I had to really you know deep uh, dig deep to find a full face of products but I have got a full face of products also not every youtuber this year did a favorites and then not every YouTuber also did every category. <laughs> so anyway, but yeah, this was someone's favorite. I'll talk about all that in the video. And um, yeah, so far so good though. I will say my skin has actually, I didn't expect to like this primer, but I will say so far my, my foundation anytime, I've used it twice. My foundation looked really good, so stay tuned. This one is not for that video. This is for my full face of NARS. So this is the first time I'm trying this. This is the instant line and pore perfecter like kind of stick. And just the whole concept of this really intrigued me. So it doesn't seem to have good reviews on the websites. Like, you know, when you can kind of see on the website what people are giving it. So I don't know if I'll like this, but we are gonna give it a go. You know, I love a good pore filling primer. I'm just putting it in my smile lines. It's probably not the most hygienic thing, so I could see why maybe people don't like it because of that. And then I've got four headlines up here, so let's do that. Feels a little bit slippery. Just getting in my mirror here to see what this looks like. It's not too bad, but it's not like the Tarte Pore Filling Primer, like the Clean Slate Smoothing one, or the Smoothing Primer, whatever it's called. I like that so far way better, but 
it's not too bad. I don't have a new color corrector to try, so I am trying, oh sorry, not trying, I'm just gonna use my Charlotte Tilbury one. I've had a few questions about this primer as a side note about whether or not it would work for dry under eyes. Yes, this is probably the best one, I think, if you've got dry under eyes that you could try, because it is quite hydrating, but it's not so hydrating that it's going to break up your concealer underneath or impact the formula of your concealer in any way, at least that's what I find. But I do find that this is quite hydrating on the under eye in a really nice way. Foundation we are gonna try is the old cult classic <laughs> NARS Sheer Glow. This is in the shade Mont Blanc. I think it's gonna be a little bit too light, but that's okay. Uh, did not realize this didn't come with a pump, so I'll have to buy a pump for it. I did try this years ago and I didn't super love it back then, but my skin type has changed so much since then that I feel like I wanted to give it another go and for my full face of NARS I really wanted to understand what each one of the foundations kind of were and their formulation and who might suit them and all that kind of stuff so I picked them all up FYI this is I said this was Mont Blanc I think um but I picked these up off Space NK they weren't on sale and they're like $55 their foundations, whereas at Mecca, I think they're 70 to 80. So, and then by the time you've spent, I think it's 60 Australian dollars or something like that, you get free shipping with Space NK and it came within like four days. So I really highly recommend looking at Space NK if you're Australian, honestly. So far the shade looks pretty good. Sometimes I find I'm better to go slightly lighter in my foundation because by the time I've added powder and everything on it can kind of deepen it all up and make me look a little bit too dark compared to the rest of my body. Especially depending on if the undertone's like not completely perfect, it's just easier to go a bit lighter. So, but yeah, it is looking good. And in winter, I think this will be like the absolute perfect shade match for me in winter. When I tried this years ago, it was when my skin was incredibly oily, acne prone because I'd just come off the pill. It was just a, a mess. It really was. And I, I just, yeah, it was a mess. So it doesn't surprise me that I didn't like it. I liked full coverage matte beat, you know, back then. Wow, actually this is quite nice. We'll see how this wears. I'm not going to build this up much more than that because I don't feel like it today. I will just take a little bit of my NARS Vanilla Soft Matte Concealer though. I will use this just to spot conceal a little bit. So I do have a new concealer. It's the Bobbi Brown newest concealer. The, uh, I don't actually know what this is called. Oh, Skin Cover Full Cup. Skin Full Cover Concealer, sorry, in the shade Cool Ivory. It's just a touch light. So I'm just going to put a teensy bit of this Tarte Shape Tape in Light Neutral on just to balance it out a little bit because uh, this is way too light. Way, way, way too light. It just accentuates my dark circles. So I'm just going to pop some of this over the top. I have used this about three-ish times before and it's okay I don't see the full cover aspect of it so far um, and I've used it with a brush and I've used it with a sponge and all that jazz uh, but yeah so far I haven't seen the the hype about this concealer although I think it was only really Ally Glines that might have been hyping this up a little bit and I think maybe Michelle Wong but I'm not sure anyway that's the concealer we're using today I do have to admit that I love that they've got a mini size in this, by the way, because um, I can test it and not waste too much of my money if I don't like it or, you know, actually go through the concealer. I really like when companies do mini sizes. Okay, I haven't actually used this concealer with the Tarte Shape Tape before and that actually looks really, really nice. Like, really, really nice. So that's impressive. I will say that normally I do have to mix my concealers to get either the right shade or the right formula just because I do have kind of a weird undertone of my under eyes and like coloring and all that kind of stuff and just how I like them to look. So it doesn't surprise me that I might find like a concoction, like say for example, if I, re I might really like this concealer with this one just because that's the concoction that it seems to blend with really well. So that's why I kind of like to test concealers for quite some time before I give my thoughts. Now I have a couple of new cream bronzers coming into the collection, but I really want to try this one today. This is the LYS cream bronzer. It got released on um, Sephora Australia quite some time ago now. And I just didn't pick it up at the time because I didn't feel like it. Now I feel like it. So I got the shade Light 
and we'll see how this goes. I feel like people didn't super love this product, but we shall see how we feel about it. I'm not sure how I feel about that pointy little side, but oh, it blends out very easy, doesn't it? Ooh. Oh wow, gosh, that taps out lovely. Why don't people like this? I don't feel like I saw a lot of people talk about this. I actually picked this up because of Andrea Ali. She put this in her 2022 favorites. But I do remember people not liking this. Why? Because that blends out very lovely. This reminds me of a stick version of the Anastasia Beverly Hills cream bronzer, which is nice because I really liked that bronzer and decluttered it because of, you know, exploits This is the first time I'm using this bronzer, by the way, if I didn't say this, say that at the start. That's really nice. You only need the smallest amount. Like you can already tell I put too much on, but it blends out really lovely. And then I'll just tap my sponge over it and it will blend out properly. So I'll just tap my sponge over to kind of get rid of any lines and excess product. Yeah, this looks lovely. Holy dooly. I mean, it's a very true bronzer. If you're looking for a contour, don't even bother. But that's quite nice. Why do people not like this? Or do people like it and they just don't talk about it? Why doesn't this get more hype? And it was cheap. I think it was like 26 Australian dollars, which is cheap for us. Hmm. I like that. If you're wondering, I really like that. I really do. What I don't have is a new powder because I'm waiting for the new powder that I'm going to be put, testing in that video to come in. So we're going to use my NARS light reflecting powder because I don't think I've really shown this much on the channel. I think I might have used this in the last video though. I quite like this. I think this is really nice for those of you that want a powder and a little bit of a little bit of blurring, but you don't really want a lot of powder at all. Like especially my dry skin friends, this is a really good powder for you. If you have combo skin, it's probably not going to be enough for you. You might want the loose version where you can apply a little bit more. But I haven't tried the loose version, so just be warned about that. For the rest of the face, I'm just going to use my Vive. Modern Perfecta Powder and Light. This is a BK 104, just because I'm trying to use this up. I'm so close. Look how much I've used. Again, if you have combo skin, you won't really like this powder. If you like using finishing powders, if you have combo to oily skin and you just want a finishing powder, it's a nice finishing powder. But if you have dry skin, you'll really like it. My skin's been dry this last two days, so it's fine to set. Plus, I'm just going to the grocery store and all that jazz today so it's fine it's a very nars heavy video i do not have the a new well this is a new bronzer actually and i don't know if i've i think i've only used this in a short maybe um maybe a video i'm not sure but this is the nars laguna bronzer i got the nars half laguna half orgasm like compact this was on sale at boxing day from space nk and um because i knew that i wanted to start collecting nars products to do a full face i was like this is a great opportunity to get like two of their cult classics and give them a go so that's what i did and i actually really like this bronzer i've used it three times already and um so far i actually kind of get the hype i kind of get why they keep releasing it it's actually well i don't know why i really wasn't expecting it to be a great bronzer i honestly couldn't tell you why but i'm impressed it's lovely it really is very smoothing non-patchy perfectly buildable lovely tone for me anyway on my skin tone um long wearing just easy it's just an easy fuss free, free bronzer from from my experience with it so i'm into it haven't tried the orgasm blush yet it's very sparkly and it's making me nervous <laughs> just gonna go off camera quickly and do my brows because my new brow products haven't come in yet and it's all just the same stuff so two seconds i just quickly went off camera and put my hair into like a ponytail which it was already in but i just made it a bit nicer i've worked out so if you don't know i suffer from hair loss and I already have a video about it on my channel, but I'm going to do an updated one. Um, I'm actually waiting on some products to come in for that that I want to test before I do that video. So it's going to be delayed. Sorry. Um, but I've worked out if I do my hair in like a lower ponytail and then use root spray to cover all of my bald patches, I can kind of get away with it. And it's just, you know, I'm the laziest person possible when it comes to hair. So it's really working well for me. So expect to see a lot of this from now on. <laughs> I'm gonna finish my lower lash line, so I'm gonna dip into the balance shade that we used in the crease, R101 from What's Up. Nothing too crazy here. I just recently got the Satin Kajal Jewel Liner in Sequin Green, I think it's called. Yeah, Sequin Green from um, Victoria Beckham. So I'm actually gonna put this in the lower 
waterline just to see what it looks like. It might be a bit dark, but we'll see. The, the thing that I love the most about Victoria Beckham eyeliners is that I can wear them all day, every day, and they don't irritate my eyes when I'm on the computer. It doesn't seem to look like a green. It just kind of looks almost black. So I would have liked that to have been a lot more of a popping green, but hmm, we'll see. For inner corner, mm, there's not an actual inner corner shade in this palette. So we will use the highlight that I'm going to use today, which is the Rare Beauty highlight in the shade Exhilarate. So I'm just going to pop this on here and here. That is lovely. Wow, that's really pretty. For mascara, I'm going to use the YSL Lash Clash. Such a thick brush. If you have little eyes, do not get this. I, I still don't know how I feel about this mascara, actually. So, jury's out. I have actually used this mascara a few times. I'm just still... I find you need to have mascara like open for a couple of good a good couple of weeks before you can like figure out whether or not you really love it or not. Okay, Rare Beauty highlighter now. So I don't have a new cream highlighter, but this is the Exhilarate shade from Rare Beauty. I ordered this ages ago as soon as it launched on the Sephora Australia website, which I think was sometime in December. And by the time I when I got my first one, it complete it came completely shattered. I was devastated. And I contacted Sephora to like they will give you a credit voucher. And it took two weeks to get my credit voucher, which was annoying. So now I finally got it. Anyway, first world problems, but yeah, I'm very, I'm very laid off the mark. This is so pretty, so pretty. I'm very excited to see this. Um, oh, she's blinding. This one, um, when I swatched it, seemed a little bit different to the Charlotte Tilbury new one. Um, it has like a little bit of flecks of glitter in it. Yeah, this is a lot more... Not texturizing, but it does show, like you can just see, this is like glazed donut. This is a glazed donut type of highlighter, whereas the Charlotte Tilbury one is very much like a liquid highlighter, but in a powder form. Whereas this is definitely a powder highlight instantly. I can see texture, not in a bad way. Like it's not emphasizing the texture in a crazy way. I, I still think it's quite lovely, but if you have quite textured skin or you really like that natural look, then go for the Charlotte Tilbury one. But if you like this, like, I mean, you could obviously use a lot less than what I've just used. Um, because I just feel like that's glazed donut. So if you like that look, which I don't mind it. I mean, I know people say highlighters out and all that kind of stuff. I'm just like, give me all the blink. Give it to me. I love it. This is the Milk Makeup Hydro Grip Setting Spray. And I'm just going to, actually, I'm just going to spray my face. There we go. And I'm just going to tap it in with my sponge. This isn't, I wouldn't call this a setting spray. I'll talk about this more in that 20, like trying the best of beauty, but um, it's more like a refreshing spray, I would call it. And I am not going to lie. I am obsessed with it. Like just spoiler alert. I'm, I'm, I'm can't actually be more obsessed with this than what I am. I don't think we have blush and lips left. So this is the NARS Air Matte Freedom Cream Blush. I just picked this up. And I don't know how I'm going to do this. I don't like this packaging a whole lot. How do people apply this? I guess that maybe they apply it with their finger. I don't like doing that. Let me see if I can get my sponge in here. <laughs> yeah, so I just picked a little bit up on my sponge, but I don't know how that's going to work. It kind of blends into nothing. Yeah, no, that's not going to work. We're going to have to use a brush. A, a brush, sorry. Let's try the brush. I'm just going to tap this out on the back of my hand. I really don't know how people feel about these blushes. So we'll be trying this together. That actually looks really nice. Like it. I just don't like the packaging. It's quite hard to get it out of, but like how soft is that? It's like a soft buildable blush. That's really nice. Okay. Going over powder really nicely. And I think that that is lovely. I think that's so lovely. That looks so natural. Hmm, okay. If you want a lot of pigment, you won't like this. Like I think if you're a medium to deep skin tone, this wouldn't even show up on your skin. They do have other shades, so I think they do have brighter ones. Um, but I quite like that. It's like a tint, but matte. It's like good for oily skin people, I think. I think I need to try orgasm right because I haven't tried orgasm before ever in my entire life and it just seems like I need to so 
Let's pick up, this is just a Delium Tools 962 slanted brush and I'm gonna dip into Orgasm. I'm scared because I don't really like shimmery blush. Oh, that's actually quite pretty if you're going quite soft. Okay. Oh, that's actually pretty. A lot, um, a little goes a long way, so don't pick up a lot because I haven't even dipped my brush back in and look how much blush I've got. That's quite pretty. Okay. Kind of seeing why people like it. Sometimes things are cult classics for, for a reason. Now, I am just going to spray a little bit of my Hydro Grip spray and just melt that in a little bit more. I think I'm just going to try this Dolce Vita from NARS. This is the Velvet Matte Lip Pencil and I'm just going to like lightly apply it. I don't want it like a bold lip. I feel like you could probably build that up a lot more, but I don't want to today, but that looks really lovely. And there was no lip liner or anything there, so that's cool. And then this is the Dolce Vita lip gloss. Hmm. I really like that. I think that looks beautiful, if I do say so myself. All right, let's zoom out and see the finished look. This is the finished makeup look. What do you guys think? I really like it. I actually love how this entire look has turned out. I feel like this is very soft and natural and it might be a little bit bold for some of you. You can obviously not go as deep on the eyeshadow if that's the case. But for me, this is like an everyday wearable like makeup look or just an everyday wearable look for me. And I feel very much like myself and I feel very pretty in this look. So yeah, let me know what you guys think down below. That was me trying a whole heap of new products that I've brought into my collection recently. Uh, these are not, that that's not my final thoughts. I'm very much still in the testing phase of these products, but so far I feel like every product I tried today was incredible, which makes me so happy <laughs> because I really hate when products are not so great, you know, because I do spend my own money on this. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed the video today. Uh, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Give the video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. You're an absolute legend if you've made it to this point. I appreciate you so much and I hope you have the most amazing day wherever you are in the world and I will see you next time. Bye!